I'd like to invite up uh, three uh, members of our community. To, they know who they are. Come on up, Gary and Amy and Esther. We're going to have a, just a little conversation with you all to talk about this scripture. And, and to give you a little background of this, this is from the fir- uh, first book in Samuel. Lots are going on in the community. It's uh, getting ready to be a transition from the time of the, the judges, which was more tribalism, to this movement towards an establishment of kings. And um, Eli was a prophet, and his, his sons were corrupt. Read the story. It's, it's interesting and a little bit juicy. And, um, and so Hannah uh, is a wife of this other guy. I'm not going to tell you his name because I don't pronounce it correctly. So uh, she gets pregnant and has this son, Samuel. And she dedicates it back to God and brings it to Eli to raise in the temple. And Eli, or Samuel um, becomes a prophet down the line. And this is the story of him hearing the voice of God, but thinking it's Eli and running to him and saying, here I am, what do you want? And then he goes back and he says, it wasn't me. And so we wanted to talk tonight about attentiveness. Now, not all of us hear the voice of God calling out to us like that, but sometimes we do. That's very rare in my experience. Most of the time, it's very, very different. So we wanted to invite these three lovely people to answer some questions about how they listen to God. And so, this is to all three of you. What are the ways you have heard God's voice in your life? And whoever wants to take a crack at it first can go. Or we can start our silence now. Hello. I would say, for me... I have not heard the voice of God directly, and I'm I'm pretty thankful for it. (laughs) But times in my life where my head and my heart have been in alignment, I have felt that those were the moments when God was speaking to me. That's how I discerned his providence. So could you talk about perhaps like what, what did that look like? So when did you know that your head and heart were in alignment? Well, I think when, when things, when I'm not, moments in my life where I wasn't necessarily fighting against the tide, that's a, that's a big part of it. When I felt passionate about something or I really wanted something and I worked for it, but the obstacles that were in my way, I was able to work through them not effortlessly, but I continued to make progress forward, and I felt like, again, those were moments where that felt ordained. Yeah. So you, you had a con- conviction and a passion in your heart and your mind, and even though there were obstacles, you kept tending to that heart and passion, and the things eventually led up? Is that Correct. fair to say? Yes. Okay. How about Gary or Amy? Um, for me, it's kind of like uh, what we call a kairos moment. And when something attracts you and you you are suddenly, you have this incredible clarity, you suddenly hear something that you hadn't recognized before. It might be in a sermon, it might be in talking with a friend, it might be in something that occurs. Mm -hmm. Um, And then following that clarity where it's as if you know that's for you, there's conviction. You know that it's for you to do something. And then that's followed by a calling. And for me, mm. the first time that ever happened was at the age of 12 at Billy Graham Crusade. I'd never heard the gospel before. My mom took me uh, to the Chicago event and mm-hmm. thousands of people there. But when the altar call was given, I felt as if it was me. I had to go. I had to respond. And so... Uh, I was introduced to a church that uh, used the Quaker sort of technique of Mm -hmm. listening for the spirit Mm -hmm. and then uh, reading a portion of scripture in the congregation or asking for a song to be sung. And so they they taught me silence. That's why I love coming here to the portico, Mm -hmm. because that that is where I also hear God. 
And sometimes there's clarity that I see what I need to do, and that's my calling, and that's what I do. That's beautiful. And before you pass the microphone, I noticed that when you share that story, Gary, you it almost made me well up because I could see the the power and and I sense that that sometimes is kind of a spirit kind of prompting or a spirit moment yes. that that uh, like when Colleen was talking about the song and it just got, kind of hit you you know and yeah. and and th those are God moments speaking to us I yes. think that aren't audible Justin come Justin you know but it it, it kind of is right and it's it's the antennas or it's the I guess the the software that I have is running with a lot of bugs, right? Yeah. And I need to be cleaned out so I can hear yes. yeah. that more beautifully. So thank you for sharing that. Amy? I think it's interesting that you say that because that's probably the most common way that I feel like I hear God's voice is through that kind of like physical gut intuition response. Mm -hmm. So like I've been in meetings with you or in, in other settings where you know, you, you're really good at this where you say, did you feel that? Did you feel that like Holy Spirit moment? And I'll have those kind of in other settings where it's just kind of like a, a gut response. Like I feel drawn towards something, even like physically. Mm. Um, I would say also that like the voice of God is pretty persistent. And so if it's something that I feel that God wants me to be paying attention to, it will show up in themes in my life. Um, a friend will bring it up. Um, it will be in a song that I'm listening to, even if it's in church or not. Um, and I also feel like through those kind of like, uh, we had a friend in a um, small group call it this week, those wise people in your life, um, they'll kind of reinforce whatever God has already placed on your heart. Um, and so I think through both friendships, um, but also kind of that gut intuition is really where I, I feel God speaking. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. So here's the second question. Like, I know when I first came to church, and I don't know what it was like for you. Some of you may have been going to church your whole life. Um, but I didn't get the, the spirit talk. The, I, I didn't understand any of that, right? And so what I understood was hurdles. I understood that I was struggling with my understanding of God and just in general in my life, pain was a great motivator for me to seek God. And that is for, for some people, but for others it's not. It's just curiosity or things could be going great in your life or you have a kid and you wanna kind of raise that kid in faith. So it does, I mean, people come in at different points, but for me, I had a lot of hurdles that blocked me from kind of connecting with God. Would you be willing to share any of your hurdles, anybody? Who wants to go? It can be popcorn. Go in the same order again if you want. Or we can, or we can start silence, whatever you want. Right um, you know, I was thinking about this question, and I think the biggest hurdle for me is trying to discern what's not the voice of God. So what are the voices that, um, that come from the world or come from people who maybe don't want the best for me? Um, so, so those, like, conflicting voices, um, even just the the noise of busyness. Um, so I think the hurdle for me is hearing or, or feeling something and trying to discern, okay, is this the voice of God? Because I've learned, you know, the voice of God is not a voice of shame. The voice of mm -hmm. God is not a voice um, that brings guilt. The voice of God is, might be convicting, but it is never going to be one that breaks me down. Mm -hmm. And so kind of holding up, um, however, that voice or that feeling, um, you know, makes me feel and saying, is this the God who I know who is revealed in scripture? Is this the God I know that I've experienced my whole life? Um, or is it another voice that I need to kind of let go mm. um, to ignore and to um, seek out really where God's voice is under or through or um, behind that other voice? That's really good. Um, one of the things that if you've ever read the temptations in the de desert in the, either Luke or Matthew's gospel, you'll notice the, the tempter always begins by saying, if you are who you say you are, sowing seeds of doubt, right? And I think that that's something that many of us wrestle with, even in our faith, but, but not only that, just wrestle with 
about ourselves, right? That we doubt ourselves. And maybe sometimes we should, but when it's coming from a place to, to take you away from love or loving God and loving others, that doesn't come from the Holy Spirit. And I loved your, uh, how you distinguished between um, guilt and shame. Oftentimes, the Holy Spirit convicts us to stop doing something, and that we feel guilty. But when it pivots to a shame thing, and doesn't, it's not a turning around, that, that I suspect isn't always from the Holy Spirit. How about hurdles for either one of you? <laughs> now they're going to wrestle over it. I know. <laughs> um, for me, this Kairos moment, there is the calling conviction. Well, there is the clarity, the calling, the conviction. Uh, but I tend to be a little impulsive, and so I have to watch out for that. And, uh, for instance, I wasn't doing very good in college. And uh, so I had this Kairos moment um, that I needed to enlist in the Air Force. Um, so when you're going to do a life-changing thing like that, you need confirmation. Talk it over with your community, with other people, mm -hmm. to see if I, I just had a bad pizza. That's why I want to do this. <laughs> um, and so to watch out. Another Kairos moment was meeting Vivica and really sensing that she is an incredible friend and she's going to be a wonderful, loving wife. And so for me, that was a Kairos moment too. If you didn't know, they're getting married very soon. They met. That's awesome. I think the largest hurdle for me in terms of discerning and hearing God's voice is simply listening for it. Mm. I find that I am much more in tune when I'm making time to be in practice of prayer and meditation. And I, you hear this a lot. I think this is a challenge for a lot of people, which is to say, you know, I, I'm having a hard time making time for this or, or prioritizing this. And it sounds a little bit lame, but I actually have a lot of space for this because, you know, growing up in a culture that prizes busyness and being mm. needed, when I think about my own journey of listening and reflecting, and how that's relatively recent in my life, I'm fighting against decades of a different way of living. Programming. Programming. And it's, it's going to take, it's every day, it's going to take yeah. um, decades more to unprogram and to realign. Um, but every time, every time that I find myself back in practice, it's like it never left. Yeah. You know, God always meets you there. You ha I, sometimes I think about it like, it, it's not like going to the gym where if, if you're gone for a while, you kind of like start from the beginning. God's not like that. Mm. He comes every time. He always shows up uh, no matter how long you've been gone. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Amen. That's right. Absolutely. I think about that when we practice um, centering prayer and meditation, we use a word. And the word is our anchor. And I always use that analogy, like if Amy is the divine, the anchor gets me back into the chair. God is always there. It's me who's thinking about something. And, it, and that's not to say in meditation that's bad that you're, you're thinking, but oh, oh yeah, Abba, or whatever it is, back to the presence of God. And that said, I think... So um, this will be the last question, then we're going to have discussion around tables. Um, tell me about a time that you heard God's voice and followed it, and then when you heard it and ignored it. Both or either or. You can pick either or. I, I think you wanted to do either or, right? <laughs> right. That's a lot of time. Right, right. <laughs> either one you followed or when you heard and didn't. I'll tell you a quick story while they're thinking. I was in Gatlinburg, and I, like Gary, had a bad pizza. <laughs> and I was with my girlfriend of six years my junior, or she was older than me, six years my senior. And we decided, because we were in a very kind of, you know, 
she was a preacher's kid, et cetera, et cetera, that we thought we could get married in Gatlinburg. And so we went to get rings, and we both got the ring, and I, we tried it on, and I had about an anxiety attack. And so did she. That was God's voice, and we didn't get married. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> She's probably praising God too. Anyway, who would like to go first? Um, for me, it's sometimes I, I have arguments with my family. And, uh, and so right now it's, it's a difficult time with one of my children. And I know God wants me to be reconciled. Mm -hmm. I know that, but I'm so angry, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I've got to get over that. And uh, so thank you for sharing that. And that's the first step of naming it. So thank you. <laughs> well, I was thinking about this, and originally I had this story for like to fit in one of two categories, and now I'm thinking that it might be both. Okay, great. So when I was in graduate school for my um, Master's of Divinity for, and seminary, um, I began a dual degree program, which is a, a so Master's of Social Work program. And I thought that that's where God was calling me into. Um, and I really felt strongly about it. And I think that God was indeed calling me for that time and place to start that. I began that program and it became really overwhelming. Um, I was super stressed, having anxiety attacks, um, overwhelmed, couldn't focus on you know, my family. And um, I had a good friend sit me down and say, you know, something's got to change. And I look back at that and I don't think that that wasn't um, the right thing in general, I think it wasn't the right time. Mm. And so um, it's funny because now I'm actually looking at MSW programs for a next um, kind of journey for me. And so what I'm thankful for though is that I had people in my life that were able to kind of hear God's vo voice with me and for me mm. when maybe I was just too overwhelmed to do that. And so, yeah, I originally thought that was gonna be like when I heard God's voice and didn't listen. I just, I listened, it just took me a while. A I was just stubborn about right. it. So, right. um, but it's just interesting that years later, um, kind of feeling the nudge again to return to something that wasn't for me then, but maybe is for me now. Beautiful. Well, let's thank them or, yeah, yeah, she's good. All right. All right, go so why would we do this? One of the things that's really important to me as, as a person in this community is for us to take the scripture that we hear and take um, these stories from ancient Hebrew and not just know them, but experience them, right, in our own way and apply them. And what I think I heard from um, Gary, Esther, and Amy was being attentive to to God's voice is our call. And that call is always a call to love. To love God more, to love our neighbor and the community more, and to even, yes, love our enemies more. 